All right. So uh, in today's session, uh, we'll be covering more about uh, the concepts. So uh, in the previous classes, we briefly touched upon uh, the important concepts. So one of them uh, is a Databricks file system. So the file system, uh, Basically, it's, a, it's an abstraction layer on, on top of the blob storage, which basically contains the directories, the files related to the respect to workspace, right? <laughs> and whenever whenever you log into Databricks, this data, uh, it's automatically, the DBFS is automatically populated. Okay, so now let's deep dive into, uh, if, if you go to data under this one and you can see data and uh, you can see that you can see that uh, default one and also you can create some tables over here right so now let's see that so if you see if you here we, while creating a table we can upload a file and we discussed about these uh, different connectors available and the other sources from uh, where we can pull the data directly using these connectors. And S3 about is Amazon S3. Now, as you can see, uh, the DBF's target directory is file store and, uh, and uh, slash table slash the, the file name. Okay, so now what I will do is I will uh, let me uh, Add, add a file over here. Okay, so for example, uh, okay, so now you can see the message is file uploaded to file store, tables, employee data, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is the default path given to this file. All right now, if you go back to our org space, and that there are multiple ways we can we can upload a file. Okay, so one of them is one of them is the uh, while creating a using the data uh, widget or we can upload it from here also. I think there's an option over here where we can upload the file over here, okay? But let, well, let's discuss that later. So now the file been uploaded to uh, data bricks. So where I can see that file, right? You can see here on the tables, nothing is visible under this, nothing is visible. So right, there are no database available. Okay, so we cannot we cannot see the uh, our DBFS options in the UI, right? So why we are not able to see is there is a setting is missing. So when you go to a settings admin console, and under workspace settings, uh, you can see see DBFS file browser, right? So the, to, to visible the DBFS uh, in the file browser is currently disabled. So let's enable this. Okay, now go back to our workspace. Let's refresh it. Now you see there is a DBFS button be enabled, right? And if you click on this, you can see under five, the the it's like a, it's like a normal any any uh, any uh, file system, right? 
So you can see the file store. Under file store, I have a tables under table. I have this employee data set that just where we have just now uploaded. Okay, you can copy the path, you can move, rename, delete, and you can do these operations on these files. Okay, so that's how you can you, you should be able to do that uh, in your uh, workspace, right? So when you upload any file, when you uh, want to see those files in the through ui this is the place you can enable that option and uh, from that you can go to dbfs and you can see all the files uh, prefixes and all okay normally normally you can uh, this is a default directory but you can create your own directory as well but i think we have some limitations over here with the community edition but uh, that's not a, a big problem when you're working in a real time. Okay, so now <clears throat> I have created, I have uploaded a file, right? So now how do I access this file? How do I read the data to my uh, uh, workspace and how do I work on that file? Okay, so now you can see, using that path, I have copied that path and I have created a table uh, using this syntax, okay? So, so whenever, whenever you open, a, open a notebook, by default, Python will come and you can choose the preferable language that is suits you. For example, I wanted to uh, use SQL, so let's jump to SQL. Okay, now, now I want to create a table uh, from my employee data. Okay, so this is the simplest SQL command, uh, create table employee data using CSV. So since we are uh, uh, using CSV options, uh, since you are using the CSV file, using CSV and, and the options, we need to give the path, like path, the file where the file is uh, uh, available and also header equal to true. That means the file had an header. If we remember in the ADF, when we uh, do the create a data set, right? And we will, we used to give that file path and we used to choose the path and we to tick a uh, first row is a header. We used to do that in ADF, right? Similarly here, <coughs> We, we don't want to choose, we need to write a simple command saying that create table employee data table name using CSV, since CSV file is a CSV file, and then options, you can give a number of options, where had equal to true and so on and so forth. Okay, so now let's quickly run this. Okay, see now when you run this, you can see the message says that spark jobs, right? So how many jobs are created? One job has been created and then that is, you can see the within that job, different, if there are any, so within that, if you see any stages, like if you're, if you're writing a complex logic, so the, 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 query going to be uh, divided into multiple stages and those stages uh, will execute parallelly, all right? Now, if you see everything and anything we do, it's, it's going to be a Spark job. Without Spark, nothing works here. Okay, even if I do, uh, let me uh, see that. Even if I do nothing, I, uh, let's say 10 plus 10. Even if I want to do 10 plus 10, also it says the Spark job, you can see. 
Oh, so we are in we are in SQL, right? So uh, see, even even with ten plus ten, right? So nothing exists. It also says the Spark job. So if you, if you remember our, our earlier um, uh, the okay, so our earlier architecture right so if you remember that architecture let me go back there right so you have you have created a initiated a program and then you are asked to do 10 plus 10 calculation right so what it does it takes that instruction and the cluster manager looks for the worker nodes available to do that and then it gives the instructions in, in a, such a way that you know it gives the task to the worker node saying that hey calculate 10 plus 10 so the 10 plus 10 going to be calculated over here and then again sent back to your output okay so that is how everything is a spark job right everything is a job whether you do 10 plus 10, whether you create a table, whether you do whatever it may be, it's a job, it's a job to the Spark program. Okay, so now uh, let's go back. And uh, so I have created a table, right? So create a simple table, all right? It's a simple a SQL command. Create table, table name using CSV options. I have given the path and then header equal to true. Okay, so now let me uh, do a uh, Now let me see select star from EMP data. Okay, so the file which I uploaded with a, with a uh, let me show you that file CSV file. So this is the file I have uploaded, and uh, we know this file. We've been uh, uh, doing a lot of exercise over this in that in uh, during our la last classes. So this file I have uploaded and created a table out of that. And you can see it's a normal like a uh, SQL table. You can see employee ID, name, salary, and so on and so forth. Now, if you want to perform, if you want to perform anything on this, like a table uh, SQL, you can play with this. For example, you wanted to, uh, do an average salary by department, right? Okay, you can run out that. Okay, so let's remove this. So what was the call name? Yeah, now you can see uh, all the department wise average salary income. So you can you can do all the calculations and the process the data using SQL, right? So if you select SQL, all the SQL commands you can use it over here. <clears throat> okay, so now yeah, go back to our our uh, um, storage again. So you can see the DBFS and uh, 
uh, we can see the files and we can see the uh, under files, some, some of them are available, right? <clears throat> and file storage tables, we have two tables been available, right? So now this is okay to, to access through UI. Now, how do I use these? Uh, I wanted to uh, use with this file store and this path and this file name. Let's say I have a, now in this case, I just have a one file, which I know very well. But what if you, what if I have a hundreds of files? What if I have a um, many files? How do I do that? I, I want to access that information of the path and the name into my notebook to do, to do some transformations, right? I can't hard code each and every file like this and I can't do that. There are many files and uh, tens and hundreds of files are available. Okay, so now, go back go back and create another notebook okay uh, okay so now here we have a uh, uh, we 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 are we have switched it to python now we will be writing with the python okay so now here we have a, a function called dbfs utils okay so let's attach a cluster here So DBF, DBFS utils is a Python uh, based function and it's, it's, it's basically a package which, have, which has many, uh, many uh, objects uh, associated with the functions and objects are available where we can use this DBFS utils uh, package and we can get that information from the file store to our uh, using, a, using our uh, programming. Programmatically, we can get those files, path, and everything. Okay. So now, for example, if you see dot. Uh, uh, Okay, so let's do, do go back. So if you want to see now what, what's happening is, if I open one notebook, another it's going to be replaced with the another notebook. The other one automatically closing, right? So if you want to open two notebooks uh, uh, simultaneously, you can open in a new tab. You can use this new tab so that two notebooks are you can uh, can be <coughs> accessed simultaneously. Okay. So now let's deep dive into the DBFS package. Okay. So let's go to help. So now I wanted to uh, check with uh, uh, modules. EDBFS util is available now.
Okay, so now let me see. <clears throat> Cluster is running, right? Okay, no worries. We'll create a new notebook. Okay, so let me go back and doc space. Okay. okay, so we can use this one and let's attach the cluster. So now <laughs> we wanted to we wanted to access that path uh, given from uh, the DBFS, right? So we know we know the DBFS is available, the path and all. So this path we wanted to access through notebook, right? I want this I want these files and all, not just for you uh, at UI level, but I want to access through uh, notebook. Okay, that is where we will use the DBFS uh, util function. Okay, now if you go to, uh, I mean, uh, Microsoft document, you can see that, for example, if you see, here the Databricks documentation clearly tells you what, el, uh, what, el, uh, uh, what are the different things. Okay, so, so it's a DB utils, not a DBFS utils. That's, that is what we are making a mistake. Okay, so this is a DB utils. Now, if you go back, DB utils, type it and click a dot and then just press uh, tab. Okay, and if you give, you give the tab, it will give you all the suggestions. If you see under this package, we have a uh, credential handler is a class this is the function this is the instance this is the class and this is the again function right so all the stuff you can do that okay for example i want to use help okay so let's do that it's okay now you can see the module provides various utilities to users to interact with the rest of the data bricks Okay, and uh, you, you can see all the all the um, modules available here, right? So since uh, manipulates the Databricks file system from the console, so I am interested to do, use this one. See, FS, FS is the module I want. To, I'm interested to access the Databricks file system from my console. Okay, so now let's do that FS.
you see now under under debut details of under fs module i'm just looking for now you can see all the available options over here right so dbf fs provides utilities to work with the file system okay most methods in the package can take either dbs and 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 then and, and then use the urls and all the information you can see that so and, and under this you can see copy cp Copy a file or directory possibly across file system. Header returns up the first max bytes header information. Okay, and ls lists the contains the directory. Okay, so now use that ls. Okay, so since ls, you can see ls directory string. So we need to give the directory of passes, pass a parameter as a directory name, then to list the content of a directory. Okay, so now let's do that. Uh, maybe in a next cell, db utils fs. Under fs, we have ls and it accepts a parameter, right? parameter which is our our file store if you remember uh, sorry if you remember our our, our file store right this is what our uh, directory just copy this and go back Okay, so this is what. All right, so let's execute this. You see, employee.1csv and name.csv are the two files it has. Right. So now you see the output. Now, if you use a, if you use a display, right? Since since we want a, we want a different display in a readable format. Let's add this one. You see, I I got the I got the. Uh, available file store tables so you can see dbfs file store employee data iphone uh, one.csv and employee data dot there are two files are there with the same uh, size and the modification time also you can see this okay so this is the way you will access the db util uh, package and then you can access the um, 
uh, the data, the, the tables and the files available in the DB um, Databricks file system. Okay, this is very important package that we will be using day in day out. Okay, so now using this file name, you can do whatever, take the file name and process it, create a data frame and you can do whatever not. Okay, now you have the list of the files and you can, you can do anything out of that. Okay, now let's say you want to see, uh, if, if you see the path dbfs hyphen and then followed by this one, right? Since we gave, now let's say I wanted to see from the root directory itself. Okay, so let's remove all the stuff. I wanted to see the from the root directory itself. Okay, so let's execute this. Right. Now you can see a DBFS file storage given to us, but if you see there are some other others also available. If you see Databricks, data sets, Databricks results, and then user. Okay. So if these are these are the default. Uh, default directory structure when you log when you create an account log into that uh, def default uh, directories and paths go will be created so what 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 uh, what do you have at databricks data sets so databricks as a company it it, it maintains a certain uh, data sets okay for us to to go back uh, as as a marketplace uh, it maintains certain data sets for example could be covid data or US uh, transportation data, or US health in information data, right? So all, the, all those data sets are uh, by default available. And, and then um, Databricks as a company, it provides that. Okay, so now let's see what is in uh, data sets. You see? <clears throat> by default it gives you the covid uh, covid uh, data is there of course it's a size nothing is there and you can see there is a readme and you can see there is a uh, there is a airline airline information there is a adult information and there is a uh, amazon and there is a uh, bike sharing, CCTV videos. So all the data sets are available for us to uh, use it and, and then uh, take a, uh, do, some, do some analytics on that. Okay, so in case, in case you want to access, you want to access uh, market, uh, uh, market data and you want to uh, get, get, uh, uh, see the available uh, data sets in the marketplace. Uh, you can go back and see this is the Databricks data sets is the standard um, way of accessing the data sets from and you can work on this. Okay, and another one is, uh, let's go back. That's about the Databricks data sets, okay? So now let's go back. So you see Databricks results, right? So let's see what is there in it. We'll start there. Okay, so right now it's not available, it seems.
Hmm, interesting. Okay, it's not available, but this is the way. This is the way you can see the available directories. And even tomorrow, when you are working with there in real time project, you might be creating different different uh, files and uh, folders, right? So using the DB utils uh, functions, and you can access those uh, path information, and you can uh, bring, uh, you can list out the available files, and you can see those files, and then you can play with that. Okay, and you can write transformations. Okay, so this is again uh, one of the important uh, package that you need to know. Okay, and uh, basically <clears throat> you need to know what are the different options available. So whenever whenever you have a doubt, right, you can take a, uh, for example, see, I, I just type dbutils.fs, right? And then I dot, I give tab or you can give tab here itself. But so when you give the tab, it will give you the all the suggestions. Okay, and, and what, what this package has and what are the different functions and uh, uh, are available, like you can use it and, and then you can access them and what, what input and what output it gives you accordingly, you can code it and you can get that information. Okay, if you can see. See all the, all these are available. Okay, so that is how that is how we will use we use the Python. Okay, so as I said, you will you need not know before uh, what it does and all. You all 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 just you need to use it, and uh, uh, there is a lot of helper uh, available, and you can use take those. Uh, uh, advantage and then you can uh, write your transformations so for everything is help is available you can see help uh, here you can uh, it will give you all uh, required right <clears throat> see within that within debit you have so many things we just touched upon fs file related but we have a jobs we have library we have meta we have a notebook and we have preview secrets, widgets, all these stuff are available. Okay. Of course, we are going to uh, do in subsequent sessions and learn more about uh, this, but all this can be uh, accessed using the dbutilis function. Okay. One of the important function, guys. If you want to go back and read, uh, there is a beautiful documentation available about dbutils. Go and read it. It will give you. Uh, it will give you different uh, uh, options, and uh, you can see what what it does and how you can use them. Okay, so that's about dbutil. So what we did is today is basically we uh, created a table using the SQL, and we we uploaded some data, and the data we accessed through. Uh, notebook and we we also uh, touched upon the dbutils package okay and uh, we know how to access the data from uh, uh, the uh, data file system from the ui as well as the notebook using the dbutil function and then we have created a sql table right <clears throat> we have created a sql table and we have accessed that through uh, we have accessed that through We have accessed that SQL table through uh, a notebook, right? Using a SQL uh, option. And then you can play with the SQL commands over here. Okay. And then uh, we also created another notebook to uh, to look into to look into the Python, right? So we, if you look into that, we have done two, two, two uh, observations here, right? Using Python and as well using SQL. SQL is easy. Uh, you can create a table and then use it as options and then you can do this. Right? It's a very, uh, we know how to play with SQL data. And the same thing uh, we, we touched upon using the Python, we touched upon DB, 
db util function, right? So db util function and we Right, so using the DB util function, how to access the DBFS and, and then the relevant files, path, and bring to notebook and, and then access them. Okay, so now going forward, we'll be working mostly, mostly with the Python and SQL. Okay, and uh, we will see switching between these two. And we will be uh, doing the, using the PySpark and PySQL, we will be doing a lot of transformations. Okay, so any questions so far? How, how it is, uh, is it uh, looks too difficult or too easy or it's okay to manage? How, what is your uh, uh, response? Sir, actually I didn't understand Databricks, Databricks utilities. Okay. What is the exact meaning by Databricks utilities? So Databricks utility is a um, package given by the uh, Databricks, okay? So yeah. is, this package contains many uh, functions and all the stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. As you can see here. It contains many classes, functions and all, okay? Mm -hmm. And they have, a, they have a purpose to, uh, to uh, get the Use it in your, um, uh, use it in your in your transformations, right? For example, for example, if you go back, uh, uh, look at our ADF, right? If you want to copy a copy a uh, file uh, from one 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 source to another destination, you used to use the copy activity, right? Yes. Right. Similarly, here if you can see CP CP is a function which copies a file or directory possible across file systems. Let's say you want to move the, let's say you want to move the data uh, from, right? You want to move the data from, you, you have a many folders, you want to move the data from one folder to another folder, or you want to take the data from, uh, uh, copy the data to a different destination. So all these activities you can do using the, the dbutil functions. Okay. okay, so this okay. is the system system given package that you can use it in your um, in your day to day transformations, right? What we what we have done here, we basically have done uh, um, uh, access. Uh, we have accessed we have accessed the Databricks uh, file system and we have listed out those files. Right, and everything we have done. Now, as, as a practice, what you can do is, you can create some, some folders, right? You can create some uh, paths within the, within the Databricks, uh, um, for example. Right, so you, with after file store, you can create your own folder, right? And then move them, copy some files and move the files between the folders and to, to data sets and all the plus, all the stuff you can play using the db details function. Okay. 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 So normally, so normally these are the reserved reserved paths. You cannot change it, but you can see there is a user specific, right? Anything user specific that uh, we can create our own for files and folders. So under user, you can create a number of folders and then uh, use this package to call a CP and then move the copy a file and move to different directories. And that way you will be uh, uh, able to practice DB utils. Okay. Okay. okay sir. Yeah. Anything else? Hi, sir. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, actually, I wanted to, I want to, uh, sir, can you send the PDF or anything like, uh, so that we can, uh, uh, in future, we can uh, refer that and we can uh, make a notes of that. Yeah. 
yeah that's a good point so definitely uh, i will send i'll be sending a uh, some kind of a uh, material right to work yeah, with yeah. Uh, to work with this one uh, so that you, so that it's very hard to remember everything right that's, yeah, yeah, that's very vast uh, <laughs> it's a very yeah. vast even sometimes yeah. me i i can i can also get confused right yeah, yeah, yeah. right i will definitely send some notes so that it's, okay. it's easy for you to refer back if something uh, yes, you want to do that. yeah and sir uh, we have finished uh, uh, adf so you send the uh, adf first then uh, after finishing the uh, this data brick you, you can send the rest correct i think adf already i have sent uh, have you, you guys sent? received from uh, madhu uh, I haven't received it. Actually, no, sir. Okay. So, what I did is basically, uh, so there is a step-by-step uh, step step guide, okay? And also, okay. I created some kind of an interview questions. Okay. Okay. So, see, ADF step-by-step step guide, right? Yes. So, yes. here, uh, so you can see how to create a data factory and all, all this kind of a helper document. Yeah. Okay, I will send this one. And also yeah. I created a interview questions. So some of the frequently asked questions uh, I created as well, I will send across. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So yeah, see, uh, since you're learning something new, right? So it's a, Definitely, uh, it's like a uh, uh, in 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 a class you you might be uh, getting thirty to forty percent, but you have to practice the remaining, right? And and come up with the questions, right? That's the that's the crux of any learning platform, right? So I can tell you as a theoretically and and also some of the real time scenarios how that going to be used in your real time. But you need to do some practice as well so that you're you're ready for the job right that's the whole intention okay so um, uh, yeah just go back and read read more about debutal function there is a beautiful documentation given by uh, databricks okay that's where you will remember and you can practice some of the stuff and we will resume tomorrow with another uh, uh, another package within the um, PySpark. Okay, so these packages are very important and they, they have to be on top of our mind always. Then only when the requirement comes, we'll, be, uh, we'll know which one to use where and then accordingly we will uh, write our logic. Okay, so tomorrow we're going to do another, another come up with another uh, set of uh, activities with another package. And then, uh, uh, then we are set to roll out to use the PySpark and uh, to process the data. Right, right now we are just getting to understand and uh, uh, how to play with the files and and, and all. Right, the, the real transformation not yet started. Okay, it's going to be uh, soon. Is we are going to start, but to do that, we, these are the kind of a building blocks we need to be aware. <laughs> Okay, any, any last questions? Sir, you have any Python exercise file you can practice with? with itself, see, so. Python, see, that's what if you, uh, uh, the plenty of information available. Okay, it's, 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 a, it's just that, you know, uh, how to, uh, you need to add, get is what uh, we need. For example, if I type Python, right? Yes. So Python, there is a, uh, it's, 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 you can see there are plenty of information is available, <laughs> right? And there is no, no, no other, uh, no other, uh, you know, documentation better than the creators of Python. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can see documentation, docs, beginner's guide, developer's guide, right? Plenty of books, Python books. You can see essays, right? Go to go through them, go to them, and and easily, it's easily understandable. It's not a rocket science or real. Okay. Right. 
so it's easily available and you can you can practice you can see examples help right you can see how the mathematics non programmers right or you everything is available and 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 python is not that not that a you know complicated uh, language it's, it's, it's a easy to use it's a kind of a, you're writing a syntax the syntax is just less like you're writing an essay program right so it's a very very uh, easy to use and practice okay and of course i have some uh, notes as well on the python you can see the cheat sheets are also available right cheat sheets are basically to give you in a snapshot okay so go go to go to and and uh, get 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 spend some time to read about this python right because why python is a kind of a, again uh, it's is is the most used language in data side right whether you are an analyst whether it's an engineer python is a must yes. right so and i, I would say it's it's a hardly takes few hours to learn python it's not that complicated yes yeah sir in this adb what is the role of numpy what is the role of numpy number numpy numpy is the another package uh, to play with the numbers right so for for data analysis you will be uh, doing lot of analysis right so for example there are different modules are there pandas numpy all yeah. the modules in python so numpy is basically to do the data analysis let's say you got a data from a sales uh, team and you want to do analysis on that right you want to identify what are the top uh, sales uh, figures what are the top geographies top products top customers right all the analysis you you do using the numpy yeah and 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 similarly pandas pandas has another flavor yes. right so it it all started with pandas but pandas had some limitations so then the numpy got another module got uh, started with numpy okay yeah the jupyter notebook also good for practice no ha ah, jupyter notebook is good. that is the it's a free freely available and it's a freeware right you can practice in jupyter notebook yeah python related and okay. for pyspark related when you when you are good with python you are uh, good you are about to work with uh, py using you to spark right you need to interact with spark and pyspark how are going to do with uh, that is what this course objective okay thank you okay i think uh, we are on, we are good for today so let's uh, practice that and uh, create some uh, and create some directories under the user right using the dbutil uh, functions and uh, um, copy some data and copy to different directories okay and it's a simple one line guys it's not going to take a hours also it's just one line uh, command if you know how to use and the data all uh, would be a copy uh, able to copy to the destination okay. okay yeah do that and we will resume tomorrow with uh, with some more uh, interesting stuff okay okay chalo good guys uh, have a good day and we will resume tomorrow thank you yeah, thanks thank you sir thank you bye